Hi there students, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another pre-lab video. This week in lab, it's all about plate tectonics. Plate tectonics, of course, is that unifying theory of modern geology that says the outermost rocky layer of our planet is broken into a series of pieces, and those pieces move relative to one another like giant slabs or plates. These plates can consist of continents, they can consist of the rock that floors the bottom of the ocean basins, or both. So like the North American plate, for instance, includes both continental lithosphere and oceanic lithosphere. The plates will have various kinds of interaction with one another. They can either be moving apart from one another, what we call a divergent boundary. They can be moving toward one another. That's called a convergent boundary. And they can be moving laterally, sideways, past each other. And that's called a transform boundary. So on this map, the divergent boundaries are shown in red. The convergent are shown in blue, and the transform are shown in green. Most earthquakes on Earth are associated with plate boundaries, about 95% of them. And some of those earthquakes are at the Earth's surface. In other words, they're shallow. And at other locations, we see a pattern of progressively deeper and deeper earthquakes going into Earth's interior. And these are known as subduction zones. So here on this uh, cross section, for instance, looking at the subduction zone at the Tonga Islands, the Tonga Trench, you see that there is a cluster of shallow earthquakes near the trench itself. There's another group of earthquakes that are of intermediate depth, not directly below the trench, nor laterally sideways uh, relative to the shallow earthquakes, but instead at a greater depth. And then there are even deeper earthquakes beyond that. Basically, what this shows us is it's almost like an x-ray into Earth's interior showing us where that subducted plate is going. As it interacts with the rock on its way down, it sticks and slips, and that generates earthquakes. So that's a classic example of a convergent plate boundary. Here's an example of a divergent plate boundary. If you look at the continental crust of the continents of South America and Africa, you'll find that both of them have a piece of really old crust called a craton uh, near their middles. All right, the Congo Craton and the Sao Francisco Craton. This is the sort of evidence that Alfred Wegener looked at when he was deducing the idea of continental drift, that there were these sort of pictures that were only complete when you matched up the puzzle pieces. So you can probably infer by simple logic that if the Sao Francisco Craton and the Congo Craton are really part of the same Craton, then we would expect that the age of that Craton would be older than the breakup that South America and Africa broke up sometime after that craton originally formed. In other words, it would be a way of figuring out the timing of the plate tectonic motions. Another way of doing that is using the pattern of reversals in Earth's magnetic field. This colorful looking diagram here is basically a time scale that's based on magnetic reversals, where each of the colored blocks refers to a period of time when the Earth's magnetic field was the same as it is today. So in other words, the North Magnetic Pole coincides with the North Geographic Pole. The periods of time when that was not true are colored here with sort of a neutral color. Um, that's when the uh, needle on a compass would have pointed towards the South Geographic Pole instead. Well, if we use that color coding to highlight these stripes of magnetized oceanic crust, we see an interesting pattern emerge. First off, you see that regardless of whether we're talking about the North Atlantic Ocean, the South Atlantic Ocean, or the Pacific Ocean, the pattern on the left side of these images is the same as the pattern on the right side of the images. In other words, they're mirror images of one another. So you could think about this as a, a tape recorder that's running in two directions at the same time, recording changes in the Earth's magnetic field. However, the tape is not running at the same speed everywhere. And one way you can convince yourself of this is by finding a distinctive marker. For instance, in this picture, we noted that we've got these different colored magnetic stripes, and two million years ago is basically where this green stripe begins. So if we go and we look at these images, we can say, all right, so that is two million years ago, that is two million years ago, that's two million years ago, that's two million years ago, that's two million years ago, and that's two million years ago. So we've got six locations where we know the exact age of the crust just for that one period of time. What we need to do now is say, all right, everything between that two million years ago and the center of the ridge today, which is zero million years old, has been produced in two million years. So how much lateral extent of crust has been made in those two million years? The easiest way to do this is to put a piece of paper between those two points, take that piece of paper and line it up with the scale, 
and then basically read it off the scale. And here it looks like we've got about 37 kilometers worth of crust produced in one direction during that 2 million year span. So you've got 37 kilometers of crust produced in 2 million years of geologic time. Do the math and you end up with 18.5 kilometers per million years. Another way of assessing the rate of plate motion is to look at hotspot volcanism. Hawaii, uh, the U.S. state of Hawaii, the archipelago of Hawaii, is a classic example of hotspot volcanism, and it's part of a very long chain of islands that includes the emperor seamounts going up towards the subduction zones in the northern part of the Pacific. The bottom line here is that the islands are of different ages. The youngest island is the Big Island of Hawaii, which is continuing to form today through eruptions of new lava. The oldest of the main islands is Kauai, which basically has lavas that vary in age between 3.8 and 5.6 million years old. All the other islands in between are of intermediate ages. So essentially, you can figure out how fast the Pacific Plate is moving by going and picking two spots, like say, Oahu and Maui, and figuring out the age of the different volcanoes there. Say, Oahu is 3.3, Maui is 1.0. So there's 2.3 million years of geologic time that has passed between when Oahu was over the hotspot and when Maui was. Again, we're going to need to go ahead and measure the physical distance between them, use the scale, and basically that will allow us to calculate a rate. This rate is a vital quantity because it allows us then to figure out how old a given ocean basin is. If you know how quickly, say, the North Atlantic is opening, then you can measure the distance across the Atlantic from the edge of the North American continental shelf to the edge of the Northwest African continental shelf and divide it by that rate, and you can end up getting the age of the Atlantic Ocean. It's a pretty powerful thing to be able to do. Now that you are empowered with these new abilities, it's time to go and work on lab. Good luck!